too. Oh yeah. So before we even go in there, I just want to continue the conversation we're having. Like we've already covered like five topics that I feel like people need to hear when it comes to content. And one of them that I just said before, this is I was like, honestly, my VA will probably follow up with you. Not me. I'm going to forget. And I even tell like my customers, I'm like, it's not you or personal that I'm forgetting about you. It's just that if something is not in front of my face, like it doesn't exist. And I don't know why that is. That's just how I am. So I've had to spend, I spent years actually trying to make myself more of that. Oh, I just need to be more whatever organized. Well, you know what that led to? I wish I could show you like having a whole bunch of sticky notes, but then they fade into the background and they don't do anything either. So like, yes. so I feel like the lesson there is like, sometimes we try to adopt a system or something that somebody else has and it doesn't work for us. And so one big whole like philosophy behind my brand and my podcast is not everything that I do. And I even tell people like, don't copy this, consider where I am and what I'm doing, right? There's so many different models on social media, Instagram specifically. If you go on my Instagram account, it's very much like I show my face influencery and I lead with that. And then I have, I, I go to podcasts and things. That's what I want though. So I just want you to hear and know that and really understand that if you want a faceless account, you can do that. If you just want to do carousel posts, you can do that. If you want to be all reels, you can do that. So that's like what I'm really excited to talk about today. And welcome to the show, Carly, officially. Oh, I'm so excited to be here. And you're already like, this is my jam. I could talk about that alone for six hours. Let me get my soapbox up off the wall here. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Carly is the face behind that content nerd. So if you're looking for another social media podcast or just content strategy, that'd be a good one. So she's also a social media manager and content strategist as am I. So if this is the first time you're listening to me and you're like, this girl just went right into the topic. One, that's a content strategy, by the way, is like pattern interrupt and hooking them in meta Two. I am Brittany. I'm also the host of the show, content strategist, social media manager. So we're both. And I've been really digging and by inviting other content people on lately because it's like one, I always learn something, right? This is such a big world. So things are changing constantly. It's even if you're staying on top of things, it's easy to miss platform updates, algorithm changes, all that jazz. But it's fun to hear from another perspective, especially if they're not directly in your industry. So she's also obsessed helping business owners with social media, helping them get seen, make sales, and create the life they've always wanted, regardless of their audience size, which I love because we don't just care about followers here. As a single mom, she understands busy, which I know many of you can relate to. And she does not believe that you have to spend hours a day to have a successful social media presence. In fact, I would say there's a big difference between using social media and being on social media, which, oh yeah, that, that could be a whole episode in itself. So welcome to the show officially. I love that you're here. Why don't you just give us like a really short kind of background of who are you in this whole world? What got you started with social media? Like why content? Yeah. Okay. One, we don't have six hours, so I'm going to try to make this short. I am not a long story short person. I'm a short story long. I will take a five minute story and turn it into a 10 hour lecture. So feel free to rein me in at any time. But yes, hello, my name is Carly. I'm social media manager, content strategist. I have been at this actually. I realized because I loved to tell myself because this is just sneaky brain stuff. I love to tell myself that I was like, I was not cut out for this. I've never tried entrepreneurship, never tried this stuff. I have been at the social media game since I was like 13 years old. Honestly, I remember being a lot younger than that because you had to be 13 to get on MySpace. And I was definitely not 13 when I was on MySpace. And at the time you could create either fan accounts for like your favorite bands, or you could create MySpace layouts. Now, anyone who is not around during the MySpace age, you actually had to understand HTML coding. So we had to create these beautiful backgrounds and all this stuff in order to get attention, have people come in and follow. Back then though, it was really cutthroat because they gave you a top eight and you had to rank your friends in order from first to eighth. And if someone moved, it was like, that was like a fight. I remember that. Anyway, so I've been interested in it for a really long time. In particular, there was a website called Whatever Life and she created and sold MySpace layouts. That it really got to me because she also had a blog and the fact that like you could, she was making money online and doing something that she loved, like blew my mind. I'm the oldest of four. I am incredibly bossy and I don't like being told what to do. And so I was like, you're telling me I could do something I love in the way that I want to do it. Yes, please. That led into a lot of wasted time. I 
I love past Carly. She was on it. But if I could go back and shake her a little bit, I floundered around. I chased shiny objects. The ADHD is real. And also chasing the magic. We want the magic overnight success. And it wasn't until I finally got serious about social media management about, I think it'll be two years ago this year that I finally started seeing results. So that's like the shortened version, but it was more so just, I loved being the center of attention, but I'm also a major introvert. So, and no one gets to tell me that I'm too introverted for social media. This is your dream job. You get to hide and not talk to anybody and only put your energy out when you want. It's the introvert's dream. So I can be the center of attention, right? And I could also hide away in my office and not talk to people. That's again, the short version of it. But I just, I love the idea of being able to express myself the way that I want. And now my goal is just to do social differently. And yeah, that's where I'm at now to avoid the continued rambling. <laughs> I just love it. I know if you're listening that you can't see my head nodding, but I was just like, yes. And it's partially, selfishly, my motive mahaha, is to invite people on who believe the same things I do. <laughs> And so like, you can hear the same exact thing from someone else. I do think that's important, but it's just like, it's not just me out here saying it. The introvert thing is so real. I have had so many people say that. I even say in my intro, I'm too introverted for social media. And I get it because if you were to meet me, even if you don't meet me, I am actually like hyper extroverted. I think when I took my like last test, it was like 99% extroversion, like on the scale, but that just has to do with energy. Okay. That doesn't have to do with capability or skill or talent. My husband's a great example of this. He's an introvert and he's a total theater kid. He is just such a good actor. And the way, I don't know if it's because he watches people. I think that's part of it is he's such an, a people observer that he understands human behavior so complexly and deeply that when he takes on a role, I like believe it for a minute. I'm like, wow, I know I'm married to Jordan, but that's not Jordan right now. He's believing mm-hmm. someone else right now. I, I just want to say if that is what's stopping you from creating content, from showing your face, then that's just a belief thing. And we can work with that, baby. Like we can make you like more confident. We can put you out there, give you the skills. But if you're just at the point where you don't like it, that's different. That's a boundary you set for yourself. Actually, I just launched the Grand Guild, which you've probably, depending on the order of the podcast, which I honestly don't know right now what the order is. I'm trusting my VA. She's doing all that stuff for me. But I will say that it should come out after I've launched the Grand Guild. So you probably heard me talk about that. And the whole point behind that is growing your following with faceless content, which is perfect for some of you because you set that boundary. And some of my uh, customers and my listeners, Carly, just some of them actually have to have anonymous businesses because they're still in the classroom. And there's this messed up stuff with teachers that a lot of schools and districts will actually try to take their money. Isn't that crazy? Oh, you were in contract with us while you were creating, even though you didn't use our computers or anything, we're going to take your money because you were employed by us. Like we own your ideas, which that's total baloney if you ask me. Anyway, so to protect themselves, a lot of them are anonymous or just so they don't lose their jobs while they're growing this thing. Cause even if you're making a couple hundred, a couple thousand a month, if you're not where you can replace your full-time salary yet, you need that full-time job. Mm-hmm. So some, some of them legitimately cannot make it face like the content to their face, but I want to just, I just want to highlight that she said that because even if you're introverted, this is great. You can just be in your room creating. What's funny is I'm extroverted, but actually the amount of time I spend alone is a lot because I'm like, I'm planning if I'm creating, like writing blog posts, like I'm not talking to anybody when I'm doing that. So there's so much you can do. And there's so much you can do with social media. You could even have your Instagram account be a mini blog, honestly. And yeah, so I would love to hear from you, Carly, like what you said you love social media. And I know we were talking a little bit about content strategy on YouTube before. What are you seeing right now? Just like off the top of your head, I would love to hear what are you just interested in, excited about any trends or things that you're noticing? Honestly, the thing that I am most excited about is almost this I don't want to say backpedaling because it's a culmination of everything we've learned, but Instagram has gone, Instagram in particular, but I'm also seeing something similar on TikTok, has gone through this interesting transformation. And I apologize, my son, even though he was told not to, is rolling cars down the hallway right next to my office. I don't know if you can hear it, but it's very distracting to me and my ADHD. So if I randomly check out, that's why. But has gone through this transformation of being this hyper aesthetic platform. It was just where you show up and you don't care. You just post whatever. And then it became a hyper aesthetic platform. And then we went into this phase of we're not going to care about aesthetics at all. And now we're almost in this phase of we need to bring both together. I'm under the 
full belief that you do not need to be perfect to show up on any platform, let alone Instagram. So when I say aesthetic, I'm not saying perfect and put together, but what I mean is it, where it all makes sense together. And I was talking with a client about this recently, like a brand is so much more than colors and fonts. A brand is like who you are entirely. And what I love seeing is not authenticity as like the stupid buzzword that we've all heard jammed down our throats, but in the reality of what it is. And now we're seeing people pull back from the hyper edited, the hyper perfect content to just we're chilling in their seat with a microphone. One of my favorite creators, I'm so terrible at remembering names. One of my favorite creators on TikTok, she's a videographer, but she just chills on a chair and she has her microphone and she's talking and she's just, her personality is running the show versus all of the perfection. That's what I'm seeing people going back to because we're all so sick and tired of the hyper perfect stuff, especially if your niche is in somewhere where there's a vulnerability involved take away some of that aesthetic perfection and instead bring it back to just the who you are. That doesn't mean that looks don't matter, but I just love that we're not the looks don't matter, but like the visuals don't matter. There we go. But just coming back a little bit of bringing it home. Of let's just sit and have a conversation. Let's talk. Let's be real versus everything is perfect all the time. And I definitely totally wear makeup every single day. And I wake up like this. I just, I like that we're bringing it back a little bit. And that's what I'm seeing across Instagram and on TikTok too. It's so fun to see, to put the same kind of content on multiple platforms and see what happens, right? Just, I've been playing and experimenting my own content. By the way, I should also add an asterisk that the playing and experimenting, that's a always thing that never stops, right? Like I was just before this, I was in this like crazy long meeting actually with other influencers, like legit content creators who like that is their focus. They are working with brands. They are trying to do the thing that many of you are not, which but I think it's good for you. So I want you to hear what they're saying when they're talking about this. They're trying things with their pitches. They're experimenting with their products. Like I tried this product launch and it didn't really work. It's like, that doesn't stop no matter how quote unquote big you get, how much money you make. Like literally we're always looking at something to experiment with. And social media is so fun because you get so much. And honestly, if you're a number nerd or like data driven like me, you get so much insight because I don't know any other platform where it's, you get that much. Like with my website, you get traffic, but unless you have something installed where you can see where did they stop scrolling? Where did they spend the most time with their mouse? If I want those things, I have to go and hunt for plugins that do that. But social media, they've built so much of that in for you. And I love that. Uh, it's funny what you said about like it coming home or to center. I posted this Instagram, by the way, or this reel the other day, where some, you know, it was like the get ready with me thing, by the way, I was like, I actually tried to do one with putting my makeup on, but then I was like, this feels really silly though, because if I was actually make, like doing my makeup, I wouldn't even be doing this. I'd have the podcast on in the background. I'd be like having, I was like, this is, this, this already feels weird because it's not how I do it. But then on top of that, I was like, but honestly, like I wear my pajamas all day when I'm at home. I don't put makeup on when I'm at home. I was like, this is silly. So I was like, okay, what if I actually make a reel about how I want? Cause, cause this is what I'm thinking in my head. I want to do that trend, but I can't. So I was like, I'm going to make a reel about that. I'm going to make a reel about the fact that I want to do that but I feel like I can't because I don't feel very glamorous. And so I poked fun at it a little bit. So instead of showing myself putting makeup on, I like just did like a, a, a jump cut of like my toothpaste, my toothbrush. Everybody's like, you need this like styling tool. And I'm like, I use a toothbrush. It's $3 at Walmart. You can get it, which is not glamorous at all. But the funny thing is because it was so different than what people were expecting. So when they see a trend, they're like, they're expecting something. They go, oh, that's not what I was expecting. And I also did some weird things. Like I did one of my video clips upside down. So just visually they're like, wait, what's happening. So it's little things like that, that you can just pick up and use in, across any niche, but being different is something that is always going to help you literally, no matter what your niche is, no matter what kind of content you're creating, if you can stand out and I'm not saying be inauthentic, right? Because that was the whole thing I was trying to figure out. How do I do this and make it not be all out of alignment for me? So what is it that makes you different? It could be the product itself or what you position for the product. Like that can actually be really good AB testing, by the way, if you have a, a printable product and maybe you've really been talking about how it's low prep. Cause you're like trying to reach the teachers who are like, I'm so busy. I don't have any time, but then actually that maybe isn't resonating as much. So maybe it's actually that it covers a subject that's really annoying for teachers to learn about. They're like, I don't know how to do, you would not believe how many upper elementary teachers struggle. And I'm not saying this with judgment, by the way, because I was there too. Okay. I was there for the first two years. 
how many are struggling with the math concepts, like actually doing it themselves. And it's a really vulnerable, hard thing. And they're like, I don't know how to do long division myself. Like I have to go there and actually learn how to do it before I teach the, te the, the kids. I'm sure a lot of teachers listening can be like, yep, or I've been there or former teachers. So if I was selling a math, uh, let's say a thing about dividing decimals. And I say, I start my content with saying, Hey, do you ever struggle to actually know how to do the content that the kids are learning? And then me too, that will already hook them in. So, oh gosh, no one's talking about this. So anything that's going to be different is automatically going to stand out. But yeah, if you can visually make it interesting, that's just so good. Let me go back to my, I'm going to go back to my form real quick, but is there anything else you wanted to riff on with that before we moved on to talking about specific stuff? Yeah, I just, I love that conversation around just like being different and standing out and along with the testing. And sometimes you're going to have to try a bunch of things to figure out what makes you different. So I'm going to be completely like, I'm going to be really real. Y'all can tell I'm a bit of a weirdo. Okay. I've got purple and blue hair. I've got blue eyebrows on right now. I usually like everything is glaring in my glasses, but I actually have like makeup on and stuff. And I like wearing black lipstick and whatnot. And I was like, Oh, my gauges. I've got a shaved head. My piercing. That's enough to make me different. Now I just have to go and repeat what I know is true and working. And I would just, I rode the coattails of the fact that I was visually hooking people by being weird because I have an advantage in that. Oh, it causes people to stop the scroll to go, what the heck am I looking at? And, but that only got me so far. And I was afraid to share a lot of the opinions that I have around social, because even though I teach how to make money with a small audience on social, I don't feel self-conscious of it, right? There's still some feels around there because a lot of people say a lot of things about it. And I was like, I can't say anything to rock the boat too much because someone's going to come and eat me alive. But it wasn't until I started saying those things that I stood out. My willingness to be different wasn't just the way, the fact that I look like a clown. It's the fact that I was willing to say what else is willing to say. And even with the math idea, even more, this is what I love too. Like when you're looking at a piece of content, don't just say something one time, say something and then figure out five more ways to put it out there. So have you ever struggled with this? But then also it speak to the feeling of it. Maybe there's shame involved. Maybe there's embarrassment involved, not in the negative marketing bull crap. I'm not even going to go down that rabbit hole, be here all day. But I just mean speaking to them so that way they know that you get it. There's a lot of people out here acting like they get it to make money and they don't. By actually empathizing and saying the thing yourself, like I remember when I got the curriculum, I don't know what it's like to be a teacher. I went to school to be a teacher, but never got there. So I could be whatever this looks like. But I remember when I got my class assignments for the next year and I was looking at what I had to teach and I saw long division and I remember I failed that in school and I had to learn it myself. And now I have to go back. It sent me all the way back to when I was sitting at the desk and my teacher who was sucky, I actually had a terrible math teacher, so I'm trying not to use names, but sucky Mr. H or whatever said X, Y, Z to me that really stuck in my head. You can take them through with a story, take them through with those actual emotions. And this is important for marketing in general. It's not just about the thing that you're selling or even how it can help them. It's what is it going to like change in them mindset wise? How is it going to make them feel better? Because you can sit there and learn long division and hate yourself every second. And you're going to carry that to the classroom. Or you can learn long division, grieve, process, forgive yourself for not knowing it, and then take that into your kids so you can connect with their kids more. So there's all of that you have to be willing to put certain things out here. And I am not the person to tell you that you have to dump out your whole life story. If you are uncomfortable sharing that you failed long division, don't share that. Share something else related to that, but be willing to put some stuff out there and see what works. Some of it is going to completely flop, but it only takes one thing to really connect to watch the magic happen. You're so right. So I actually have a, a math printable store, which I don't, that's not really my main focus. I partially made it just to see if I could sell the stuff that I made when I was in the classroom, right? I was like, let's just see what happens and for fun. But one thing I did was I started a math teacher podcast or elementary math podcast. And the thing I embedded into my intro after talking and testing it out was, hi, I'm a formerly calculator dependent 
elementary teacher. And yeah, I felt yeah. like people really resonated with that. They're like, oh yeah, that, that's me. So like when I would check the kids work and then like secretly under the desk, like oh, crap, like <laughs> what is this? Like I would, I, that was me. That's why I say, I don't say it with judgment because I'm like, that was me. I really struggled with it. And also with money, like I, I've also been really transparent about like my money journey that I'm just barely becoming financially literate now because I just grew up with my grandma, bless her heart, rest her soul, would say that credit cards were free money. And which is hilarious, but also not true. So I had to unlearn all these things after a long time. So it's if you don't know, if no one ever taught you, then how would you know? Even if someone did teach you, sometimes you just need to learn a different way. We all know that. So yeah, I love that you're like, share as much as you feel comfortable with, share it in a different way. Those are really good tips. And I love speaking to the feeling and sharing this, in, like I said, the dude in the calculator under the table, that kind of thing makes it really, oh yeah, but I've done something like that. If you are willing to share, but you totally don't have to. And, and I can get why that stuff would be really embarrassing, but just anything you can do to relate, or you can also speak to the opposite. Like a, you could, instead of getting away from pain, you can speak about, imagine how amazing it's going to feel mm -hmm. when your kids get their scores and they went up 20 points on NWA, something like that. They're going to, they're going to know that was a very niche statement that I just made. So if you don't know what that means, it's okay. We can pass by it. But something like that, like you're either mm -hmm. taking them to like picturing what's it going to be like when they use your thing and, or how can I get away from how I'm feeling right now? Cause there's something that they're trying to get away from. Right. So it's like, you can choose your approach there and that's just something else you can experiment with, right? Make so much content towards the end in mind and then away from the other thing. So I think that's just really good standing out. There's so much, Oh gosh, that could be, that might even be like what I title is like standing out because the ways you stand out, right. You can stand out by your ethic. She was just saying there's lots of shady stuff in the marketing world. And even though I'm sure you're listening, you probably don't really like marketing. I'm guessing that's why you're here because you're like, I don't actually want to be on social media, Brittany. Can I just not do it? Which by the way, you don't have to, which is probably not something I should say having this podcast, but I don't want to force anybody to do anything. So I'm like, if you don't want to do it, that's your choice. Totally. But if you're not doing it because you're scared or because you don't have the skills, we can work with those things, right? We can work with those. If you decide you don't want to, that's a totally different, totally different conversation. Yeah. And, and I also want to know, I want, it could be sustainable too, right? Do not expect to be doing something that somebody else is doing that they've already been doing it for years and they have 40,000 followers. They've worked up to that. Anything else that you wanted to share on that, Carly? Oh my God. I could talk about that all freaking day long. The comparison game, we can sit here and say, don't compare yourself all day long. We've all heard it. We all know it. We still do it anyway. The problem is that we are comparing ourselves when we don't know the whole story. In particular, there is one person in marketing that I, she has said some things about moms being lazy and that really irritates me, especially because she is in her early 20s with no children. But anyway, something that she talks about a lot is that she has built this multi-million dollar agency in two years. That's incredible. I'm not knocking that. I'm not saying it was easy. But the thing is that we're all comparing ourselves to her. I got caught up in it too. And without realizing that she grew up working with her dad, who was some sort of marketing specialist. So she grew up learning the marketing basics. She grew up in this era of building content. I started at 12, 13. I grew up with it, but she's even younger than me. So she really started up in her life on this. She already had these marketing basic skills. She already had these basic content creation skills. It is unfair of you, whether you are starting out at 15 or 45 or 65, to act as if you can do the exact same thing with zero knowledge. My nine-year-old son can tell you the ins and outs of a commercial, why they use certain music that they use, why they use certain words, why they do certain things. He can pick it apart because his mom is a marketer. And I can look for that and he's grown up in that. If he decides to have his own business, he's going to have a leg up in that. And it's not going to be fair for any of y'all's kids who don't grow up in that to compare yourself to him when he's already going to have this insider knowledge. You cannot compare yourself to someone who started at a different point than you. When you're looking at a track, it looks jacked up because one through five, it looks like five is starting way behind one. Because of the, because they have it, I don't know how to explain this for the people who are not watching me do weird hand signals, but it's, there's one and then like a foot or two behind, there's two and then three and so on and so forth. And that's because around the rink is different lengths. If everybody started at the same point, it wouldn't be fair because the inner, or inner link has less to run and the outer link 
Not like my son does hockey, so I think of rink all the time. The lane, there we go. Oh, the where did link come from? The lane, it wouldn't be fair for the person on the outer because they have more to run. We are expecting ourselves to start at the same point when we are, have different distances. We have to be willing to take a step back and start where we are instead of comparing ourselves constantly. And it's also not fair of them to do those comparisons on you, which I'm hearing a lot. If you have kids, if you are married, if you are whatever, and you're just now starting to learn this stuff, don't get mad at yourself for not being able to do what someone else has done when they don't have any kids. Okay. This is my full-time job now. I'm hundred percent self-employed. This is my life. If you have a nine to five and you have kids you're taking care of, you cannot compare yourself to me and my output because this is my livelihood now. It gets all my attention. Aside from my son and his hockey, that gets like the other half. And that's most of it. But do not compare yourself without knowing all of the information. So if you get caught up in that, start asking yourself, where did they start? Was it really two years ago? Or did they start basically in utero growing up with a marketer? Did they start, did, did they have more supportive parents than you? I'm not saying someone is better or worse than someone else, but you've got to stop comparing yourself like that. It doesn't help anybody. Anyway, there's my soapbox that makes me so... <sighs> No, it's true. And it's something that can suck all of us in. And I also want to say on the flip side of that, know what your unfair advantage is. Yes. Like I, I get, I also try to say this all the time on the podcast, but in case this is your first time listening, or you've never heard me say it, I don't have kids. Right. And so I try to be like upfront about that and say, please do not think you have to work as much as me. I am here. I, I don't want to say I had nothing better to do because that's not true, but like, I have a lot of free time. I have that gift. That's a season I'm in, right? We all get seasons we're in where the seasons are going to change, right? If, and when we have kids, like whether we adopt them, birth, whatever, I know I can't be at the same pace for a while. And that's okay because I'm going to choose to prioritize my kids at that time. That's okay. I'm going to own that, but you have an unfair advantage too. And you just don't know what probably what it is yet. So what is that unfair advantage? Maybe it's that you've been in the classroom for 25 years. And so you have a veteran content expert matter knowledge. You know what I mean? I don't have that. So I wouldn't be able to pitch that for me. It was funny enough when I was doing my math store and all this stuff, I was like, I actually really the marketing part way better than the actual product creation. So I found that out about myself. And so now I partner with those people. So I was like, let me do this stuff because you hate this stuff and I love it. So like, it's a great trade, right? It's a great partnership. So you have to figure out what that is for yourself, right? Like part of it is luck, but I really do believe that luck only takes you so far. And luck often comes from creating quality stuff and putting yourself out there and putting the reps in. So what is something you could do to differentiate yourself? Maybe you have a really strong voice. Oh, also that's fun. So I was on a radio show in college. That's a fun little fact about me. And I did classical music diction training. So people will say, oh, wow, you sound like you have a media voice. And I'm like, I do, I trained for that. So what is your unfair advantage? You probably just haven't had time to really sit down and think about it. I would challenge you to do that this week while you're in the car, while you're walking your dog, whatever your podcast time is, spend a little bit of time in silence. I know it's uncomfortable. Trust me, I know I need that constant simulation, but spend a few minutes in silence and just think, what is my unfair advantage? And if you really don't know, because a lot of times we don't give ourselves enough props, Ask the people around you. They probably see it more clearly than you do. What sets you apart as an educator, as a teacher, as a, probably don't consider yourself a content creator. I would consider you a content creator, but as a product creator, right? As an online shop owner, what makes you so different? What do you do really good? What, what are you really good at? And it's probably something you're like, oh no, just that, that's easy. But that's why you're so good at it because it's natural to you now. So I would challenge you to think about that this week. And also I want to touch on before we wrap up, I want to make sure we touch on connection and engagement because that those are two big hallmarks of what you believe Carly about social media. And I totally agree. So I would love for you to first start with connection. How can we create connection with content, with a carousel we post? We're not talking directly to someone in real time. How do we create that connection? How do we, yeah. How do we foster that with our social media content? I love that. And that's also, it this segues so well from what you're talking about, about having an unfair advantage. So it, as far as like that thing that came to your mind, but you're like, no, that can't be it. It is. So my unfair advantage is that I actually worked with for a long time um, before I really dove into this business with uh, DV survivors. I don't want to get anyone banned. So I'm just going to say DV uh, survivors because that was my experience. And I also worked with many too. 
I've, I understand a lot around trauma. I understand the way the brain works. This gives me an unfair advantage in how I speak and how I relate to people because I can see things and notice things that they can't really see themselves because they're too close to it. Okay. So that it feels completely unrelated. I'm like, wow, what does my trauma experience have to do with social media? A lot. And now I'm not saying that this is something that you can't learn. Also something that is teachable and you can learn. And this goes right into connection. I think the thing that is missing in social media, in marketing in general, is this connection piece. We've all heard the phrase post and ghost, right? Where this is where we just post something and then we leave the platform. This is so incredibly selfish because we are expecting everyone to give their time to us, but we're not giving time to anyone else, especially not our followers. And we have to be able to connect with them, not just in our content, but actually in a more physical, I don't, I don't know, is physical the word for things we do on social? I don't know, in, in a digital connective way? I don't know. But what I mean by this is, so as far as we're talking about connection and like my empathy and my trauma training and things like that, look for the things that your people really need to think and understand not just about your product, but about you and about themselves. If you really want to connect with your person, ask yourself, what do they need to think about themselves to actually hit the buy button? Because I don't know about y'all, I have so many courses and opt-ins and things that have lived and died in the Google Drive graveyard. Like they have gone there, right? And it's because I wanted that quick feeling of, yes, I'm going to do this thing. And then I commit to it for two days and then I'm done. I've lost trust in myself. I don't trust myself to finish a product. So if I'm talking to someone who can relate to that, it is my job to help build them up and help them to understand what they need to do to build that trust up within themselves. If that's something that I can do for my client, for my student or potential client, students, followers, they're going to remember me. Okay. Remembering names is so hard. And I, there's people on TikTok that I follow and I'm obsessed with other than Elise Myers. I can't remember anyone's name at all. Like I know their face. I can't remember their name to save my life. But if I can get someone to go, that chick with the blue hair got me to actually finish this course that I was working on that had nothing to do with her. I am now a part of that conversation. I'm now a part of their day-to-day -day life. And the nice thing about that is it doesn't take them buying from me, but it could take someone else going, oh my gosh, I, you know what? I know someone who can help you. There's this chick on blue with blue hair on TikTok on Instagram. I'm going to go see if I can find her and I'm going to send you her, or her freebie or free resource or whatever it was, whatever it is. If you really want to stand out, ask yourself what they need to think about themselves and about you. This is not what you want them to think about you. This is what they need to think about you in order to buy. My people need to know that I get it, that I get busy, that I get that they can't spend hours and hours. I am a workaholic because I'm so obsessed with what I do. It is a literal hyperfixation and I love it, but you don't have to spend hours and hours and hours, but I'm not also not going to lie to you and say that you can do five minutes a day and call it done, especially when you're just at the very beginning. They have to trust that I get it but I'm also going to get them to where they need to go, that my product is going to hold them accountable, that it's going to get them out of that stuck mindset. Because spoiler alert, has 90% of the time has nothing to do with what you don't know and everything to do with what you're telling yourself you can't do. So side thing. But also on this connection aspect, as far as like the posting and ghosting that I was talking about, we have to spend time engaging. You have to be willing to engage at the bare minimum with your people. Every single comment on your posts, other than spam or someone's trolling, block, less release, whatever, you're going to pray for them later, that's fine. But just block them, that's not worth your time. But other than that, even if someone leaves a comment that's just a clapping emoji, you need to like that comment and hit respond with, thank you so much, I'm glad this stood out. Or thank you so much for the love. What about this really resonated with you? It's up to you to continue that conversation. You guys, they're taking time out of their day to stop what they're doing, to hit and then comment. I don't know about you guys. My attention span hardly lasts that long anymore. If I'm taking the time to stop and comment, I am somehow managing to shut off noise from around me and get to a place where I can comment back or comment. If someone, if I comment on someone's post and they don't comment back, that tells me a lot about them. 
The only exception is if they're a huge creator and there's already hundreds or thousands of comments. I'm mostly commenting to come to conversate with other people, which is also an engagement thing to do, but that's another conversation. Um, and you need to be responding to those people to show them that you are grateful that they took the time to do that. If you like think about the time I remember when my favorite YouTuber liked and responded to one of my comments on a YouTube video, I almost peed my pants because such a crush on him at the time and I was like oh my god he knows I exist we're, he commented back and oh my god we've had we had conversations I remember when we were in the dms for the first time and I was like oh my god I've officially made it this is everything now I don't consume as much of his content anymore we don't talk as much anymore but one it's networking that's a connection now but two forever that is in my brain as he took time out of his busy day to respond to my comment even though he had a large audience Forever, I'm going to appreciate him and what he does because we've built that connection. Now, that's only part of it. My full 555 framework, I'll run through it really quick, is you can go through in less than 15 minutes a day. The first time you do this is going to take probably 20-ish minutes because it's going to take time to find the flow. But one, okay, this is after every single one of your comments has already been responded to. If there are any comments on your posts that have not been responded to, don't jump into this yet. That's first. Then you're going to go pick five followers. That's not people that you follow. These are people that are following you. Pick five of their accounts and go to their page and leave some love on their posts. Go comment on a post, like some things, conversate, okay? And then you're going to go to five people who do not follow you and you're going to do the same thing. You can find them through comments on other posts, through the explore page, or just scrolling the Reels feed or TikTok, whatever. And then you're going to pick five people that you want to build a relationship with. So let's say I didn't know Brittany and I was like, oh, she is such a freaking powerhouse. I want to get to know her. I want on her podcast. I want her on my podcast. I am going to spend um, time every day for the next 30 days just commenting on anything she puts out. I'm going to make sure she notices me. So that way, by the end of these 30 days or six, sometimes it takes longer if they're a really big person. But you're just going to stay. I'm just going to go connect with her. Okay. Those five points, those five people the same five people until you reach a point in that relationship that you can find a new with at 15 minutes, you guys, five, 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 five people that follow you, five people that don't five people you want to build a relationship with. You want to build connection and you want to be remembered, go and do that. And that's also going to be the thing that boosts engagement on your own account, because on a human level, it does all the wonderful warm feelings, but then algorithmically too, it helps you because you're being social on the social platform called social for a reason y'all you have to be social on the platform i love that that's such a good way that by the way that's networking 101 like when i look at my content pillars i was doing that the other day which by the way i recommend you do every year or two at least on my content pillars and i was like realizing I'm like wow pitching and networking are actually core content pillars even though i never really say that overtly that's exactly what you're doing is networking which i think that freaks people out a little bit so maybe i won't use that word but that's all it is you're just making friends that's part of what we're doing on business is making friends and you just never know okay so quick story because i don't want to keep carly forever but just to illustrate this point so there's this girl I super admire and she did not have a big fall. Actually, I have two stories like this, but this one girl specifically, she had, she's just one of those people that I'm like, I can tell she's going to be big because she's great. She's already great. She has a small following, but she was so good at helping her people this is in the travel space. And I was like, how can I help you? Like, how can I amplify what you're doing? Because people need to know about you. And at that time, my audience was bigger than hers. So I was like, I would love to have you come and speak to my group because I think that they would really like that. This is the travel stuff. And so we did that. And then and we just became friends. I don't, I don't know how else to explain it. We became friends. We had a lot of shared interests. And then she had this, this paid event, this in-person conference where she had 300 people coming in. And she offered to me, hey, do you want to come speak? And I was like, a paid speaking gig? I was like, I, this has been on my goal, my bucket list. She's like, I know, let's make it happen. And I was just like... Thank you so much. And when I looked at the other people who were on the list to speak, I was like, holy crap, what is my life right now? And I remember thinking like, I definitely do not deserve, in my head, I was like, I do not deserve to be next to these people because I am not as big as them, quote unquote. What does that even mean? Quote unquote. But I'm not, I don't have as big of a following as them. And that part is true. But the thing is like that part one, it doesn't even matter really how many followers you have. It's one part of social proof. Yes, it's one part of social proof. But if you're using social media for sales and for list building, then you can have people, you can have your reel go in front of 30,000 people and put like tens of thousands on your email list and they don't follow you. That's just 
it's just how it is now. It's different. Anyway, so that was a paid speaking gig I got and a huge milestone, like box check because I made a friend and I gave mm-hmm. birth. You know what I mean? I saw potential in her and it was genuine. I wanted to reach out to her. Someone else, similar story. So my group had 3000 or something at the time. Again, she came. I loved her. We just chatted a lot and we're still friends and we still support each other and buy from each other. I just think that's so cool. And now her group has 120,000 people in it. So wow. it's like, yeah, yeah. So and I'm talking about Facebook groups, by the way. So I just want to share, I don't want you to reach out to people because you think of like, oh, I'm going to get something from them someday. And I don't think you guys would. I think if you're listening, you really do care. And your problem is more on the side of you feel like you're giving too much away or that you don't know how to convey it in your content because you feel like you don't have anything to offer. That's usually what I hear something along those lines. But honestly, just being a friend, just like, how can I help? I really do feel like that comes back to you. And I will say, if you're new, it's hard because you're like, I don't even know what I can give yet. Because I was just telling you, I had thousands in my group yet. You can give the gift of time, right? If you have, if she's saying the 555 thing, maybe spend 10 minutes on the engagement. I'll tell you what, I I have an ego too. When people like my videos and my stuff, I'm like, it makes me happy. I'm like, okay, look at me. I'm so cool. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So when I get a podcast review, by the way, I love podcast reviews. Please do that. I have nothing to offer you, which maybe I should figure something out to give you guys an offer, but I appreciate it when you guys do. I truly do. I read them and I go, oh, and they make my day. So Like we all, we're humans. We want that. Who doesn't like to see all the love on the stuff they're creating? So you could do that. That's something free you can give and you don't have to have a big following. Oh, and I recently left a comment on this creator I love. Again, didn't leave the comment for this reason. It was more so to talk to her than the people who responded. But hundreds of people thought that comment was clever and they liked, and they came over my profile and I got 30 to 50 people. I'm pretty sure directly from that just because of the time span. So you just never know. You never know who's watching. You never know what's going to happen. And I really do think putting yourself out there, being a friend is like one of the best things that you can do, which by the way, is how I also connected with Carly. I was like, oh yeah, we're both in Face Mastermind. We're both doing social media stuff and content stuff. I'm like, let's connect. Let's figure it out a way to work together. That's that's it, right? It's not, it doesn't have to be complicated. So yeah, was there anything else you wanted to share before we wrap things up? Oh man, there's so much, but I did want to just, just to wrap up that networking conversation. I feel like the word network has gotten such a bad, a bad intimidating rap because we think of like corporate, we think of suits, we think of those things. And I remember being someone who used to listen to these podcasts at the very beginning. And I was so judgmental and I was like, oh yeah, they say they're friends. They're not friends. They're just helping each other. And now that I'm in it, I get it. I understand it now. It's, I'm not just in this just to get in front of new people. I want to build connections and relationships because let's be real. I am a major introvert. I'm a big personality, but major introvert. Don't get those two things confused. Okay. But it's lonely. It can be really hard to do these things alone. And we're in a place where we tend to put ourselves in a bubble with other people who get it online, which is great. But out in the real world, it's always such a shock to me. When I hear people have such strong limiting beliefs or they talk down about online jobs or all these things and it's, oh, we really are the minority. There's not a lot of us. And so it's like networking, it's just a fancy word. Brittany was saying for making friends and building connections can be helpful for you. Sure. But also how about just not being alone? Seriously, networking, not related to anything business. My son is in hockey. This is just be a really quick story because I feel like this really conveys this. And there was a hockey game where his hockey team was able to go to this college hockey game for free if he wore the jersey. So we went to this thing, whatever, and we happened to show up to uh, and see some friend of my son's there. And I'm a single mom and there's this couple that have just adopted me. I think as like the hockey, like I'm their little hockey mom baby and they are like supporting us and all these things. I mentioned to him that my son wanted to get a puck signed and he's, I know the coach of the hockey team. I'm going to get that puck signed for you. This is going to be great. And so I was like, oh, this is going to be so awesome. My son's going to be so stoked. And we're new to the hockey world. So we didn't know them. My son's just obsessed with anything hockey. And we get there. And because of this connection that he had with this guy, we sat in a place where the players were coming on and off the ice. So they got to fist bump and talk to them. They recognized him. One of the players gave my son a hockey stick, signed it for him. Very, I don't know, almost thousand dollar stick gave to him for free that he got to keep. And he ended up getting, he didn't get a puck signed, but he had a signed hat by every single one of the players signed his hat that he wears. That is the power of networking. 
That was me that I talked about out of my little introvert bubble. I didn't come out on purpose. They definitely pulled me out um, of my little introvert bubble to talk to me. And it ended up turning into this whole thing where now my son has a connection with these players. And every time we go to the open skate where he's allowed to have a stick on the ice, he plays with these college players now. And now he's getting to know them. Nothing to do with business, but now he's networking at nine years old. And he knows college players now. And they're setting him up for things. And they're getting him into games. That's networking. It's not big and sleazy and corporate and what's in it for me. It's just building connections. And when you're a genuine person, the good comes back to you. When you're a trash person, trash comes back to you. But it's just like money. Money is an amplifier. If you're a good person with money, you're going to do good things. If you're a bad person, you're going to do more bad things. Networking is the same way. If you go into it as a sleazeball, you're going to get sleazeball in return. If you go into it knowing, okay, I could get something out of this, but I just want to connect with people, that's going to come out first. Don't be scared to go out and network and talk to people. It can lead to really great things. Whether it is on or off the ice, <laughs> whether it is in the business world or not. And I just think that's so important and not to be overlooked because that has changed. I also find marketing lessons in everything I do in life now, but I just think that it's such a perfect example of the power of networking and what it can do. Yeah, I feel this so deeply. I have a, actually, let's see, it's January is when I'm recording this. I don't know when you're listening, but in about a month and a half from now, I I still like, can't believe these people meet me online. They don't know me. And then they come and travel with me. I'm like, these people are just as crazy as me. I love it. They're just willing to go meet up with a stranger. <laughs> I love it. And I'm going to be meeting up with these five girls in Manchester, England. And we're just going to, just because it's fun. I'm like, it, there are so many people out there who feel like they know you when you put yourself out there, even if you don't feel like you know them as much and they want to know you, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I'm not saying you have to put yourself out there and be an influencer or a personal brand like I'm doing. Please don't, don't hear that. But I'm saying like, what can you connect with them over? You know what I mean? There's so many little ways that you can connect with them or even in the DMs. If you're like really, maybe you have the anxiety about showing your face or your appearance. I get that. Connect with them in the DM, send a voice note. Oh my gosh. Like just spending that extra minute to send a voice note does so much for somebody. Somebody. Like they just, wow, this person, like this person made me feel so important. So it's those little things you just never know. And they might become your actual friends. Like these girls, we have a group chat and it's just going off all day. I'm just, I'm so grateful for that. So I hope that you take the chance on yourself and on content that you put yourself out there. I hope that's what you get. Thank you so much, Carly, for coming on and for also taking a chance on me. You're like, okay, let's just hang out with those girls see what happens. So I appreciate that. Where can people go and find you and connect with you today? Yeah. Thank you for having me on. This was fun. I love conversations. I love talking about social, but I love talking about social in a broader context too. Not always just the strategy stuff makes me yeah. so happy. You can find me at that content nerd just about anywhere and everywhere. Instagram and TikTok is where I show up the most. And the coolest thing is that you're going to see that I have a very small audience on all platforms that I'm on. But like I said, I have been hundred percent self-employed since August. I had a part-time job. Not anymore. This is a full-time thing without a large audience. That's the power of connection, you guys. People are out here with a million followers and can't sell one t-shirt. I am over here with very small audience everywhere. And I have a, a business that allows me to create the life that I love. You can have that too. Go out there and do what we've talked about. Network, build connections, talk to your people, be human on social media, and you're going to watch magic happen. And I believe that so fully. Oh, I love it. And I just think about, I'm so grateful. I'm going to start tearing up. I'm, not, I'm so emotional today. I, I am so personally grateful for social media. I just think about what an amazing opportunity in time that we're alive. If it hadn't been for social media, I hadn't, I wouldn't have been able to even sell my first digital products. I wouldn't have been able to do as much affiliate marketing. I wouldn't have made all these friends, helped them start businesses and stuff. I wouldn't have been able to connect with you to to, to talk directly to you. I would have had to go buy an ad in a newspaper or a bulletin board. Like mm -hmm. we're living in such an amazing time where things are really equalized out. And if you have a good message, someone out there will hear it. The right person, will, it'll eventually get to them. Like the algorithm will work its magic and you'll figure it out. So thank you so much for being here. Thank you for being a member of my community. I appreciate you so much. I hope you know that. I hope you all know. I'm, I always think about you guys when I see like a PR thing. I'm like, oh, I should send that to them. I, I'm literally looking out for you. So I hope you know that someone has your back and I hope you appreciate being in this community too. Thanks so much for joining us today. Bye.